You know, with green being my favorite color and all, as you can tell by my YouTube handle, I thought it necessary to give a video tribute to my favorite Green Power Ranger, Jason David Frank. Now this particular celebrity death has been more difficult for me to process than any others I've gone through before. And I really couldn't understand why. I just remember that it was always a delight to see Jason reprise his role as a ranger throughout the years, and I always checked in on YouTube to see when he's come back. I think the most devastating thing for me was knowing in my mind that I would never see Tommy Oliver suit up in the green or white ranger suit ever again. And you know, he was such a stand-up guy and being a role model to his fans and people he came into contact with. And as campy as his first stint as the Green Ranger was, it was totally awesome. I know you're the Green Ranger. Well then, Pink Ranger, you should also know that you and the other Power Rangers will soon be destroyed. It was so over the top and so mean, and it was so hilarious that I loved it. You have been warned. And the reports are that he, of course, took his own life. And from certain media outlets, that seems to be the case. Amy Jo Johnson paid a really touching tribute to him, and also to check in on the well-being of fans. So that video is really good to watch if you were affected by the tragedy. And you know, when a news article reports tweets of people who knew him giving their condolences, sometimes I'm like, is that it? What else are they feeling? I need to know. The human condition needs to know. That's why I think it was a really great gesture for Amy Jo Johnson to check up on her fans, as well as Jason's fans, to see how they're doing and express her feelings about his whole death. Yeah, it just really sucks. <laughs> she even plays a few songs in his memory. As I, watch I mean, it's really helpful to know that if you're really affected by this sudden passing, that people even closer to him, who knew him, are right there with you. Recently, I did a review that touched upon death in an episode of Saved by the Bell, the college years of all things. And it got me thinking, in death, where might Jason be? As a Christian, I always had this idea from past interviews that JDF was as well. And upon further research, that notion was confirmed. There's a really good interview that touches upon JDF's faith and how he came to Christ because of his brother's death. Probably when I lost my brother, you know what I mean? So, sorry, it's just, people were like telling me like, you know, I need God and all that stuff. And man, I was like, if, you know, one more person tells me that, then that's what it is. And that even led him to create Christian MMA merchandise under the label, Jesus Didn't Tap. Because he did it. And there are some misconceptions out there about the fundamental Christian belief of heaven and hell. Some people incorrectly believe that good works get you into heaven. In the year 2011, I died and found myself in St. Peter's office. He told me I wasn't good enough for heaven or bad enough for hell. If I had a second chance, tell me when I would have taken... But in Romans 3.23, the Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So even a little white lie is going to separate you from God eternally. In essence, that means hell. Guilty. That's why God sent his son Jesus to die for the sins of mankind. He didn't quit, he didn't give up, tap out. He could have tapped, snap anytime. Like it, he could have just called thousands of angels if he wanted to. It's, a tap out is an expression of, I give up, I give up, I give up. He never did that. Nobody else could do it. That's why Jesus didn't tap. He was God in the form of man, perfect. And yeah, he had second thoughts about God's whole plan too, just as any human would. In Matthew 26, 39, Jesus expresses his sorrow to the Lord. Falling on his face, he prayed, O my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but... Your will be done. Jesus didn't tap. He was crucified for man's sin and rose again three days later to conquer death. So in the truest sense of fundamental Christian belief, the only thing you need to do to get into heaven is confess your sins, believe that Christ died for them, and in doing so, repent from that life of sin. If you want more information on the matter, I like to go to godquestions.org 
for answers to biblical questions. I'll provide a link specifically to that question in the description below. Now, there are also misconceptions about taking one's own life in Christianity. Because Judas in the Bible betrayed Jesus and took his own life, some automatically assume that taking one's own life is a straight ticket to hell. I grew up in a very traditional, conservative church. It's still a great church, but one of the elder gentlemen there made me believe that concept. I distinctly remember him saying, don't fall asleep in the hot tub, it'll count as suicide and you'll go straight to hell. And I was a kid, so I was totally freaked out about that. But Romans 8.39 says, Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Which means if you believe in this Jesus who died for your sins, you're going to heaven. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Not good works, not being baptized, not going to church every once in a while, but the belief that Jesus died for your sins will get you into heaven. Which in essence means that if Jason David Frank really believed in Christ, he could be up there right now teaching martial arts. I think living it and speaking it and speaking the excitement will pique your curiosity and my tattoo that I'm strong, that you know I'm tatted on my arm with the Jesus and <laughs> tap strong about it. And as a Christian, that gives me some type of comfort. And if you are a Christian and still have some worries about people who have committed suicide, GodQuestions.org has good answers on that as well. And you know, his death is a struggle, especially if you grew up respecting the positive guy that Jason David Frank was. This whole thing really hasn't changed me. I mean, uh, it's great to be able to be a positive role model on kids. And you know, it's just amazing to see the fans and to see the kids grow into a whole new generation. But who cares about profit? You can't take it with you when you die. When you're gone, people say, hey, I remember this dude. And I remember what he did for me. He was the consummate Power Ranger, a great role model, and extremely endearing to his fans. We all fight our internal battles, and I encourage you to seek help if you are struggling with those kinds of things. I too have struggled with thoughts of depression and anxiety about the many pressures of life. Even Jesus did. But one thing that has really helped me greatly is this thing right here, the Word of God. But not just that, listening to sermons and going to a church that teaches lessons inspired by the Bible. And maybe that's not for you right now. That's okay. As a follower of Christ, I believe what 1 Peter 3.15 has to say. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Which means if I want to participate in a Twitch chat and the moderators say no religion talk, I'm going to respect that. However, I don't really view a relationship with Christ as a religion. To me, religion is a practice. And I think getting to know who God really is, is a lot more than that. And I like to think that Jason David Frank did in his life what it says in 1 Peter 3.15. He treated people and his fans with gentleness and respect. I mean, he's left a legacy that will long be remembered for many years to come. And you know, besides Jesus, nobody's perfect. I'm sure he had his baggage. But doesn't everybody? I know I do. But again, Jesus says in John 8, 7, Is there anyone here who has never sinned? The person without sin can throw the first stone. Huh? Is that you? I don't think so. International Children's Bible Version. It's a good book. But anyhow, that's what I wanted to say about Jason David Frank. It was kind of like a friend to me. A distant friend that I never met, but I really grew to enjoy seeing every now and then. He's even got a new movie coming out, Legend of the White Dragon, which is slated for release next year. And yeah, it might be tough to watch, knowing that it's his last performance. People can have a huge impact on others through the way that they live. I think Jason saw that in Jesus. I remember this dude, and I remember what he did for me. And that's why I can agree with him that Jesus didn't tap. And I hope you don't either.